So, you want to play um, Yakety Sax, the Benny Hill theme on the harmonica. Uh, I'll demonstrate it for you, and then I'll show you some tricks about how to do just that. So I'm using a, uh, a background track that I've made on uh, iReal Pro, I-R-E-A-L Pro, which is a program you can get for Macs, and I think you can get it for other computers as well. It's like 10 bucks. It's unbelievably valuable for anybody who wants to play jazz or any kind of music on the harmonica. Uh, it basically, it, it's got a million songs. I had to create this particular one uh, because they didn't have it. I didn't see it in their list, so I just put the chords in a grid, and it's like Band in a Box. And you, a little simpler than Band in a Box, I think. You can then... Um, uh, change the tempo and you can change the key. So I give this a country tempo and a key of G and it's at a tempo of about uh, 205. The song could be played slower and could be played a bit faster, but this is a reasonable tempo. So I will play it about the same speed as my, as my raccoon friend played it. Um, now I'm going to play it a little different than the raccoon played it because when the raccoon recorded this, it was, he had the luxury of being in a studio and his own studio, but he, he was able to use different harmonicas. So actually he, or maybe it's a she, switched uh, to get a few bends that were pleasing, uh, switched to a different harmonica. I believe uh, some of the notes were played on a C low harmonica or possibly on a G, a low G uh, diatonic. In any case, that's a lot of trouble and it's not something you can do live. So. You can do a perfectly respectable version on a C harp. I'm using a Seidel 18, 18 something. I've worn out <laughs> 1847. Um, and um, this is a great harmonica, by the way. This one has lasted a long time. So let's hope I don't blow a reed as I play yakety sax for you. Then I'll explain a few things about it. So here we go. Let's see if it works. Yes. Raccoon says. Uh, so, what did I just do? It's pretty darn easy. The beginning part is just hold, I don't know the holes, holds four, holds four draw and five blow. That's D, D, C, I mean D, E, D. So, nothing fancy, all straight tones. And then I bend that three bend. I'm not sure if it's exactly the right melody, but it's close enough and it sounds good on harmonica. Now, what did I do? That's what I do. I abbreviate a little bit. Now. This is the moment where you need an overblow. So get your overblows together if you want to do this tune. It's a good one because it's actually what I call prepared overblow. You're playing an F sharp, um, which is a whole six 
blow over over blow, but because it's got an F going to an F sharp, you, you can prepare the overblow by doing a little in breath before you do the out overblow, and that actually makes the out overblow easier. It's like this. So you play the F and the F sharp by blowing. And just by bending that note beforehand, it makes the, the overblowing of the F sharp a little bit easier. So, recapping. on the F on the five hole draw which kind of gets you somewhere between an F and an E but it sounds like you're going it's a good effect so that's an easy bend uh, now I do a little hand trick here I go doesn't really matter. It's a choice whether you start, close, and go open, but this, the difference in the sound is very effective. I would start open. No, I would start close. That's E, G, and then you bend the A. Now, with my raccoon version, I actually played a low C and I could bend that in a nice way, which I can't do on this harmonica because it's in the upper register, so I can't bend it. So I go, it's actually a, e, a B to an A. It would really be a B to a B flat. I can't sing that high note. But I don't want to do an overblow because he's no, it's not graceful, so I go which is a little bit of a fake, but it's instead of being B to B flat or A sharp, it's B to A to B. And you go. You give it a little grace note before the B. So that's a little lick you can practice. And then you go. Which could be with the B flat, but that would include a overblow. So, so far the only overblow we have is the F sharp. I'm going to play it again real slowly. D, it would be nice. It doesn't, I mean, an octave A, unfortunately, it doesn't exist. So you can play an octave on the last note. Now, the bridge is the hard part. That was so hard, the raccoon couldn't even do it. Uh, this is tricky, and you need to be pretty uh, fluid with the overblows to do the second part, which modulates to the C, to the key of C. If you wanted to have an F harp, you could probably do it and switch harps there, but that's kind of cheating, so I won't do that. I mean, there's no cheating. If you're fast enough to switch harmonicas or you can hold two in your hand, then that's fine to do. Um, but if you've only got one harmonica, a C harmonica, you can play that part, but it takes some pretty serious overblowing. It goes... And you can bend up to that. So that's C, B. Now an overblow. It's the circus theme. So that's tr tricky because you're going from a, a normal bend to a overblow and back very fast.
that is a B to a B flat. Now that's an A, just six, a seven bend, I think it's a seven, going down to uh, A flat. Now, is the F sharp, which is the five, I don't think in terms of holes, so excuse me, I, I think in terms of notes. Um, so it's an F sharp, it's the, it's a five hole blow. Now the, the next thing is the little the lower version of that, and you start it with the bending of the A, which is hole seven. And it's exactly the same thing. You're getting those chromatic notes by overblows. And you're doing a quick change of overblow, which is difficult to do. So work on your overblows and you'll be able to do that. And it's a little sloppy sounding because you're going from a draw to a blow and you're going from a normal note to an overblow note. So it's got a kind of a rinky-tink feeling to it, but that's okay. Because after all, this is the Benny Hill theme song called Yakety Sax. It's not uh, Mozart or Beethoven. Now the rest is very more straight, straightforward. Or you can do that nice little which is another, what I would call, prepared overblow. You play the C, the D, now you're playing an E flat to an E, or a D sharp to an E. It's a good beginning overblow line that you might want to learn in any case. And I go right in on the bend up to that high C. That's not bad either, which is easier to play. So you're going G, A, overblow B flat, and now regular B, D, and you can play B, A, G, real straight. Now, the, uh, the actual melody is, which is great because you can play arpeggios of a C major scale very nicely on a C diatonic harmonica. It fits right there. So you're just going from one C to the next, from C to shining C. Now the last phrase is something like, It's really, I think the way the saxophone plays is an, is an E flat. Now that's hard to play because it's a it's an overblow without any without any preparation. But you want to simplify it and go. And then you can go or because you're actually modulating. You're in the key of C now, and you want to go back to the key of G. So the chord plays, you go C, C sharp, D7. And the D7 brings you back to the beginning. And that's another thing. You can put a little chunk in there. So let me play it with the music. I'll play it now slower. Uh, I'll play it from 205, I'm going to take it down to 160, which would be painfully slow, but let's hear what it sounds like.
that's slow. And I mean, that's relatively slow. You can, I would say, practice it at 120, 140. I think fast would be about, uh, let's say, 220. See if I can do it at that speed. And one nice thing about this iReal Pro thing is you can actually um, make it progress from chorus to chorus as it repeats. The tempo gets faster and faster by a given amount. You can choose the amount. So if you wanted to go up five beats per minute every time it comes around, it's a good way to practice a lick, for example, slow. You can make it rise one beat per minute each time and go over and over and over again. And another thing about this program is that you can isolate a particular chord sequence, not the entire song. You don't have to hear this. So you, one little part uh, or of this song or any other song that you want to study, you can just cycle those chords over and over again. So I'm going to try it now at a ridiculous tempo. Let's see if I can do it at this tempo. Uh, two, two, what is it now? Oh, 215. That shouldn't be too bad. Let me make it 220. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, play. Play, Maestro, play. Oh, faster than that. But it's not necessary to play it much faster than that. The song, what's nice is to have those and that's another thing I didn't mention is sort of there's some tongue articulation. You know, you're doing ticket, 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 ticket. And then when you do this part, I call it the Flemish approach. You have to have a little, a little growl, and you can make a kind of a trumpet sounding, which is what the sax does in yakety sax the whole time, but it's sort of natural on the tenor sax. So I'm going. I can't. What I can't do is an overblow with that sound, but um, it's useful. It's great, great in an old blues. Um, easier on the draw than it is on the blow. So there you have it, Yakety Harmonica, as played by my friend and colleague, the raccoon. how fast I played it when I did the raccoon part. And there's a funny story about the raccoon, which I'm going to tell you, whether you like it or not. Um, it was about, I don't know, eight years ago, I got an email and with a file and they said, hey, can you, I, 
I have no idea who it was from. I don't even know if there was a return name on it, but it just said, hey, could you record Yakety Sax on the harmonica? And here's a background track. And um, we'll pay you whatever it was, 250 bucks or something like that. And so I did it because that's what I do. And um, sent it back to these people and got my check and didn't think about it. And I didn't ask them what it was for. And then a, a, a few years later, I don't know what led me to Google Harmonica Raccoon. Maybe I was doing a video and I wanted to, I don't know what. For some reason, I, I, I've always liked raccoons and I've always liked harmonica. So I Googled Harmonica Raccoon and lo and behold, I saw this toy, which was being sold by something, some place called like the Country Kitchen or the Cracker Barrel or some kind of Americana themed, um, I could find out. If you look it up, <laughs> uh, and it was an old video of actually on the shelf in the store, there were about a hundred of these things on the shelf, and one of them was actually playing the harmonica. And I said, whoa, wait a moment. That sounds familiar. And in fact, it was me. So it took me about two years to actually locate one that was for sale on uh, eBay. There may be thousands of them now. I don't know at the time. They were in great demand. So they're very rare. And uh, not only do they play uh, yakety sax on the harmonica, but they they move their little hands and they wag their tail. And uh, oh, there's another thing. Now I put some harmony notes on the second one. There's a harmony part there. <gasps> so, that I can't tell you how to do with one harmonica. You need to have two mouths um, to do that, to play both. So, uh, if you have two mouths, that, that's, that will help. So, there you are. How to play yakety sax like a raccoon. Thank you very much. To my friends in India, I will see you in India. I hope you can make it. Uh, we'll be in uh, Bangalore and um, Hyderabad and possibly in Goa and possibly in Mumbai. We're trying to work that out. To the rest of you, Om Shanti.